it puts Alex in an awkward situation where normally he would just let his opponent go first to see an extra card. Uh, Alex is going to be forced to go first and uh, see one less card than he normally would. And if he bricks one, like one of the next two, uh, the next two games, he's just going to be X one. Mm -hmm. It just seems like. Spellbooks have a hard time against decks that put pressure on really fast. And right now there's Sylvan's Infernity and uh, Water, all that can do that. So it, it's kind of hard to rate them. They're more of like a like a meta call, like an anti-meta sort of deck. Fate, Eternity. Wisdom. So is this telegraphing that he has secrets see, in hand? See, that's always really scary because you don't see secrets or master yeah. in, in those cards. And that means that his hand is... Like, when that happens, usually they're 99% of the time, unless someone, unless the person is just messing up, 99% uh, of the time they're going to end with Fate and, uh, and Tower. And that's the ideal setup for Spellbooks. Like, see, he's, yep, he definitely has master now, yep. So like this is now he's just gonna search tower mm -hmm. and uh, this is what I'm talking about. Like he opened his hand is I don't oh my God. I don't I don't he really know. Me. Okay, so yeah, because he already he already has fate. He had he has fate. He got wisdom off of. Uh oh no, he doesn't have fate. What? He already has tower. He has fate. Oh, did he got that off of? Uh, I thought fate was off. He, did he get fate off of Crescent? I thought he got wisdom off of Crescent. Yeah, he got wisdom off Crescent. Uh, but because fate was in the Crescent, so I don't. Off of secrets, he got it. I think. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> uh, Strong start. Yeah, this is almost everything he could ask for. The only other thing is he doesn't really have a. Uh, a trap like he as you saw he set two spells mm -hmm. and this goes back to what I was saying game one uh, uh, he spell books tend to set more back like they they bluff more back row than they really have like right now all Alex has is a uh, is a fate to protect him but he, he's trying to bluff it off as like he has two real cards when in actuality he just doesn't um, so all right Stygian gets removed that's that could be really big, uh, depending on the rest of Drew's hand. Looks like he has a soul charge, which doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alex seems to be in a pretty decent spot. It, it was It's really important for Alex to open up with... Uh, open up with... I see, that's, that's kind of strange. He, he he has to have another MST if uh, if he just blind MSTs like that because you don't you don't let tower. Oh wow. Yep. Yeah, well, there's a. <laughs> that's that's okay, I guess. It's not it's not really that great. He's just gonna search a break probably to deal with the tower and attack over magician. Like it's it's okay. It's oh, so so he already has break so. If he already has break, that means break barrier, uh, one unknown back row, which I believe is the soul charge that we saw, and then uh, Archfiend is just going to attack over the magician this turn. So Alex is going to be drawing to three cards, and since that bar since he already just hard drew the break, uh, the barrier is going to put a lot of pressure on Alex, because uh, now you can't just off the top get uh, secrets for the for Blue Boy because Blue Boy won't go through. So, does uh, if tower's destroyed, does it count as itself as a spellbook? If for it, for summoning, yes, it does. Okay. But uh, Drew's going to chain Regeki break, or not Regeki break, uh, Infernity break to tower's effect, making mm -hmm. it miss timing. So. Okay. So where normally uh, Alex would be getting a Justice of Prophecy right here since he chained it and uh, Infernity Break is destroying Tower on Chainlink 2, it's going to miss timing and not be able to special summon a monster. I 
Okay, gets eternity. Um, can't see Alex's hand. He has secrets. No, he's added master. I know. Master secrets, secrets and magician, or is that priestess? I guess it could be Maxi also. Uh, yeah, I, ca I can't. See it's just like is. one of those hollow effect monsters. Yeah, I was about to say, I, he, uh, Drew thought about negating with Barrier, and I I would have been really surprised to see him do that. But, uh, the main thing you should honestly be worried about right now uh, is, like, power and then master you know, power again just to be able to attack over the Archfiend, and you can stop that with Barrier. Uh, other than that, there's, like, I guess if you don't have an immediate answer to the next tower, it could get out of control again. Um... Yeah, with one other card in hand, I could have potentially seen uh, Alex negate the master to prevent the tower from being searched. But I guess it, it's going to come down to what he top decks, which is usually how infer how it goes with Infernity. Yeah. If he draws a level four, which it doesn't appear that he did because he's contemplating attacking. But if he drew like a monster right there, that would have been really, really big because he he has he does have the soul charge, and it would since he has uh, soul charge, he'd be able to get another search off of Archfiend, and would be able to deal with the tower. I believe Alex has Kaiku in hand. Okay, yeah, Kaiku's really strong uh, again, That's like of turning uh, turning off the brakes. Um, it's also a card right now that he can just summon. Okay, so he's, he's burying that. That was actually really smart because if, if he allowed that to go through, uh, he doesn't know this now, but it's just going to work out for him because if he would have let that go through, Alex can just summon Kaiku and could literally just ram with the Archbeam, which that that's worst case scenario because he probably just assumes that the set is a Necromancer, so you don't really want to get over Archbeam right now. So now he's just going to play the game slow. The, the game's pace is kind of slowed down a little bit where he can gain advantage off the tower. Yep. And that's that's exactly where Spellbooks want to be. Alex is using his life, his life points as a resource and slowing the game down to where he wants it to be. Did you see what he said? Was it Needle Ceiling? Uh, yeah, I believe it was Needle Ceiling. Oh, that's what I thought. Yeah, unless Drew top decks something, uh, it it just Alex should win this game, uh, just based off of like probability. But uh, I mean, obviously, if Drew top decks something, it's just all right. See what Alex is doing right here is he's he's flipping the Necromancer up. He didn't do this last turn because he needed to set the needle ceiling. Uh, but he's making sure that that's flipped face up. That way, if his opponent summons another monster, then he can just need, he can needle yeah. ceiling. But the I don't know if Alex has an answer to this, and if he doesn't, uh, his opponent could could just ram Kaiku into Kaiku, and then main phase two use Necromancer's effect. And uh, like Alex just has needle ceiling right now, so I believe it's needle ceiling a book of moon. So I guess he could book the the arch beam, but mm -hmm. ev even that that's not that's not very strong so he, he's pretty much hoping his opponent uh, draws a monster and summons it to be honest because otherwise it's not that's just not a strong play I don't know if I agree with that oh okay he has, oh, he has crow that's, I thought that's, that was maxi okay yeah I thought it was maxi also Everything makes sense all of a sudden. Yeah, that that just that play makes infinitely more sense. He drew power, so it turns out if he would have played his Book of Moon, <laughs> that just would have. Oh, he drew justice. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty big. 
Uh, he sent justice. Maybe he knows something I don't. Yeah, see, this isn't good now because I, now I don't believe he has he has max Z for Archfiend, but n now his opponent can just search break and huh? I don't I don't really know why Alex would set Justice. I guess for the needle ceiling. Right, but in that situation, like by you setting Justice, there's two monsters on the field. Your opponent would have to top deck something to to special summon two monsters, or like summon two monsters in one turn. Uh, that, and it's pretty specific. Like any other normal monster, and you'd be pretty much in this situation you're in right now. Drew's letting, uh, letting Tower go through, which means he's probably considering uh, Infernity breaking the set. But, yep, yeah, there goes that. This is weird. I I would not have let the the tower resolve. I think that's that's a very big part of the game. Um. It, yeah. That that doesn't matter though. Oh, did he attack with the arch beam? I guess. Wait. That doesn't matter. If he attacked, did no, he, he attacked the necromancer. Okay, it, no, oh. it, 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 if he. Um, well that's not how that works. I'm hang on. I'll be okay. right back. Brandon's uh, dropping some knowledge. All right. Yeah. The the dispute was um, you saw Drew play Lance to the attack. Mm -hmm. And he thought that that made tower uh, just it voided out tower power? or not tower power, um, but it actually just doesn't. Even if you l after t power is resolved, uh, it remembers that the thousand gain even if it gets lanced. So uh, Alex just actually didn't lose any life points off yeah. of that battle. Now Alex is going to book a moon the Kaiku to protect it from needle sealing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this game. Uh, it's opened up for him. Game's definitely in Alex's favor. Oh yeah, because he set the break this turn, right? He should. Yeah, I was about to say he should just infernity break the Kaiku right now. But he set it that uh, turn. Other, yeah. I was about to say because otherwise it would, it's just going to be dead as soon as Alex flips the Kaiku back up. Also, r it'll remove. There's Necromancer and Archfiend, which is not what you want. Oh, wow. Top deck's the Archfiend. Yep, that's that's how it goes. And there's Phoenix Chain. And if there's no response to that, yeah, that was... Now he's just gaining so much advantage off the tower. Yeah. That's a secret he drew. Uh, yeah, I am wearing my Puma sweater. Someone was asking earlier. Yeah, this is not what Infernity wants. It's a very, very simplified game state where spellbooks have tower and... Uh, the, the game's just gone on way too long for Infernity. Infernity's never supposed to be a deck that that goes into a game this long. And uh, as you can see, 
they just they they start to lose control of the game once uh, once spellbooks get established. He resolves justice, which is just a huge thing. Yeah, the, the justice being set was really weird. I don't. I mean, I understand uh, you were trying to put monsters on the board for uh, needle sealing, but at the point when he said it, uh, there was only necromancer. So uh, there's there weren't going to be four monsters anytime soon. Like, I mean, it just worked out, but that was a really unorthodox play. Does he send with Armageddon Knight at this point? Uh, with Armageddon Knight, he he honestly probably just sends either Stygian or yeah, Eris. Um, Eris just sets up. Well, actually, Eris is if you're not respecting the back row, which again is like I said, probably. Uh, did he not search with Eris? What? Oh yep. Is he only play? Oh what? Oh yeah, okay, one Archfiend's removed, one's in grave, and one's on the field, so Eris actually just didn't get anything. <laughs> uh, what he was banking on doing was using Eris to search Archfiend, make Laval Chain, which wouldn't have worked anyway, and uh, sending Stygian from his deck and special summoning Archfiend and getting a search that way and like putting pressure on Alex again. Yeah, G going to game three. see so th now spell books are going to be th this is going to be the deciding factor in the match um, you never really want infernity to go first it's, yep. really, it's really scary you just you kind of have to just hope you draw uh, a hand trap and if one of two things Alex wants to happen either Alex draws a hand trap to uh, stunt the the combo infernity is going to try to do first turn or uh, Alex just hope that, hopes that he doesn't open the combo. Because uh, it looks like, from what I've seen the first two games, it, it looks like Drew's playing more of a uh, traditional Infernity build as opposed to uh, the build we saw from Sahabi at Nationals where it played the Photon Thrasher and the Template Goldfish and the, di I don't even know how to say the other card, the Hippo, the di Dinotherium. Dinotherium, yeah, that card. That's the only thing I know about the card is the name. I just I call it the hippo. But uh Okay, and so yeah, he doesn't open the combo. So. Alex opens magician. Uh so it looks like Alex opened up pretty strong and uh Drew did exactly what Alex was hoping for, to not open the combo. That's like the play Alex or Drew did was probably one of the weakest plays Infernities could have done. Uh, so that's really good for Alex. He also has power, and uh, he just searched off secrets. So he can always try for the power master play again. That didn't work out game one because uh, prison shouldn't be in Drew's deck anymore. So. See, Alex is just thinking, uh, searching for Master Search Fate. So I guess Alex is opting not to uh, to try to power over the monster because it looks like he's already used the Master to to get Fate, which is fine because uh, Drew let off that he had a really weak hand to start off with, so. Uh, there's no real, there's no real reason to overextend and waste all your cards into one monster when it it appears that he has plenty more in his hand 
uh, by the way he played his turn one, which is exactly what happened. He just now Alex is going to book him in his uh, or yeah, I guess spell book of fate is to flip magician face down on the end phase. Oh, is he changing? Hmm. He's going to return. That's that's sort of interesting, because couldn't he just... Uh, okay. Okay. That's... I see I see what Alex is doing, uh, but at the same time, I feel like he could have... He could have just powered over whatever monster was set, because he, he had secrets and power. So you could have set it up to where... Uh, you just you can you could even hold your fate. You don't even you he wasn't forced to fate right there. He could hold his fate, and uh, and then be able to power over the monster after searching wisdom, which is like what's it's what he's gonna do anyway. Is that Kaiku? Uh, yeah, it's Kaiku. Yep, it's been sided in. Book of Moon. Uh, Book of Moon, I'm assuming, is being chained to uh, to power. Um, so even if even if uh, Alex Wisdom's right here, uh, Kaiku won't get the boost from power, and power is essentially just gone. So that's that's one of the that's actually the only card that uh, that you really want to see when your opponent's trying to power over one of your monsters is Book of Moon because they. They just can't do anything. It's the most devastating card to power plays. And Alex still has the wisdom to get over the Eris. Um, which, this this is a scary moment. Because I, I played Infernities in Richmond. And if you open Eris, a lot of times that was what was preventing you from comboing. And uh, searching the Archfiend is actually just really big. And it could, it could just enable a combo now that he wouldn't have had otherwise. Uh... Obviously, Alex has to attack into it because uh, because the situation, like you, you can't just sit there and leave it on the field and let Infernity draw cards. But it's just a scary moment. Like th this next turn will be a defining moment in the game. Does Alex only have one card in him? Uh, yeah, Alex has one card. What what surprises me though is why Alex didn't power uh, the blue power the magician. yeah magician. Because Magician would have attacked over and dealt 500, and uh, and then he could have removed it with Kaiku and still gotten the search, and then Book wouldn't have done anything. You're gonna Book a Moon a, a Magician? That's not that's not good at all. Yeah, they're True. not in time or anything. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I could think of is that Alex saw Lance game two, so he was trying to, I guess, play around Lance. That's the only that's the only thing I could I could imagine. Uh, you know, I'm not entirely sure. I, I guess, I guess Archfiend could just be a problem because it'll attack over Magician, and then he doesn't have a way to deal with it to like protect his Kaiku, and he wants to keep Kaiku on the field to stop all the Infernity breaks and the Stitchy and Street Patrols. So, uh, the only thing that's not good for Alex right here is he didn't draw a trap. He drew a second Maxi. So. Uh, while he's going to be able to draw a card when his opponent summons a monster next turn, because he's probably just going to exceed, uh, his opponent's just going to deal with the Kaiku and uh, leave him in still a favorable position. That's what someone said. He didn't banish anything for Kaiku. Well, he didn't. He didn't banish anything for Kaiku because there was nothing in there. Uh, th right? There was nothing. There, okay. there were no monsters in there at the time. Uh, if Kaiku attacks over a monster, uh, that monster is not eligible okay. to be removed. You can you can remove other monsters, but you can't remove the monster that was killed by Kaiku. That that's okay. that's another reason why uh, powering over the magician and attacking into the heiress would have been, in my opinion, the better play, uh, because then. It would have dealt with the Eris. He would have searched, and uh, and then Kaiku could have attacked directly and removed the Eris instead of it being in the grave. It just uh, it just makes soul charges a little bit weaker. Like you never know, uh, 
you never know when like a soul charge being able to go into like a levy air a rank three could be the deciding factor in the game so and your needle ceiling that was that's actually a that's nuts it's actually a good card for Alex right now like it it's not amazing because he's probably just going to have to do it the next time. He's going to have to do it when the Drew summons a monster and he's going to lose his two car his two monsters also. But yeah, so he's probably just going to have to do it right here, which isn't. isn't uh, he's great. actually okay with this. What's his other what's his other back row? Or did you see it? I didn't see his other yeah. back row, but he can't really the, the Inferno guy can't really do anything. He can make an exceed and just get over Kaiku. Like it's he, he could just make 101 and attack over Kaiku, and that would be how would Alex deal with a 101. How many cards in the Alex hand? Uh, just two, and it's two max C. Hmm. So after after this card gets sent to the grave, Alex is going to play max C, and uh, his opponent's pretty much going to have to exceed because you can't just leave. I mean, there's... It's really not that smart to leave Armageddon just uh I think his opponent has a, uh, has a chalice set, too. D oh, does he? Uh, yeah. It, he's all, he's kind of telegraphing he has a uh, a soul charge also because he sent... Uh, I saw a lot of green cards down there. He sent Archfiend, which is normally a a card you want to keep in your deck unless you're comboing because it's, it's just a good top deck uh, in situations like this where you don't really have a combo. Alex doesn't play Max C right here. He has another Phoenix Chain? See, my I, only guess. I, I just... I don't know. You have two max Cs. He's kind of... He, I feel like his opponent would, would still have to exceed. The only thing that I think Alex is trying to do right here is to get his opponent to overextend uh, by exceeding and then summoning another monster uh, and, and then getting more value out of your needle ceiling. But by doing that, like you're, you may be getting an extra card off your needle ceiling, but you're also giving up like the negative one that you have by having two max C in your hand. Like, I think you should just go ahead and get your one for one out of that. And uh, I don't know. I just I don't really agree with not playing max C. No, right. I understand what everyone's saying about uh, about he's not playing Max C, so his opponent will be more likely to do his Soul Charge play. But it's like the Infernity player also just has it. Oh. Like the Infernity player has two back or not two back row. Uh, Alex, Alex has two back row. So he has like those the two Infernity player in the still, has a, still has to honor that, has to respect that the two back row. And see now, now Neil ceiling is just terrible. Yeah. Okay. Maybe not terrible. He's just gonna he's gonna bring back what three? Okay. So yeah. Even now, it's not good. Alex could still potentially win. Uh. Maybe. I don't. I don't think so. Because now he's he's just gonna search and pass. He can search a barrier and pass, and Alex pretty much loses. Yeah. Yeah, this game's pretty much over because now Alex has a, a needle ceiling, which he's... Oh, you know what? Actually, I take that back. Uh, Alex could set the max C that's in his hand, and when his opponent draws, could play uh, the needle ceiling. Which isn't the worst. Right now, Alex is debating on playing the tower. Uh, yeah, and he just goes ahead and plays it. Yeah, yep, so you're he's right. He's gonna do the, uh -oh. the play I was talking about. So now Alex is just praying that there's no trap sunset, <laughs> or yeah, or break. Break would also uh, two breaks. See, right here, I don't agree with that play. Uh, your opponent's back row are full, so see, like exactly right here. Uh, your opponent's back row are full, so if he if he draws a back row, he can't set anything else unless he activates a card. And if he draws a monster, he's going to summon it to... Okay. Oh, he did have the break. All right. I don't understand. Yep. Well, yeah, that, okay, that's, that's definitely game. 
If you didn't think it was before, it's absolutely <laughs> this this game this game is over. Yo, shouldn't his life be lowered at sixty? Uh, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. His life points definitely should be lower than uh, sixty-seven. It should be like thirty-seven, but yeah, that's that's irrelevant. Yeah, he paid three thousand last turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's just irrelevant. I guess I missed that. He's paying for one. He's got what? Huh. He paid for one. Yeah, this game's absolutely over. Oh, okay. See, well, here's something. Uh, here's something that's actually very real. Um, Alex is going to pretty much force out a uh, a break. I don't know if all the breaks are gone, but if they're not, then he's forcing all of them out. Uh, he's forcing one of them out by the tower. Um, and if if he draws like a monster or something, they are in time. Oh no, they're not in time. They have a minute left. Yeah, Alex loses. <laughs> I I heard the the round clock go off for the the other players, and I was like, oh well, that gives Alex a legitimate like way to win the match. And that's just not, that's not the case. I think that's all Alex is even doing right now, even play, like even continuing this is just hoping that he can some way just run a runner, runner and stay alive, which that's not. <laughs> and this is where you get to watch Solitaire. I like Solitaire. Did he play two? He didn't play two soul charge that turn, did he? No. No. Okay. That was last turn because he passed. Yeah. So you should. He should definitely break this. <laughs> There's no reason to give Alex any more cards. Yep. And there, that's the handshake. 